Well, we're here to celebrate the start of college football season, and uh, let's do more of that like we do every Wednesday. Right now on the Vaqueros Cafe and Cantina Hotline, it is Justin Wells of Inside Texas. If you haven't done the on3.com thing, log in that way, get to Inside Texas. They've got even more for you now. He's at Justin Wells 2424 on Twitter. Justin Wells, game week, brother. How are you? Hey, now. <laughs> It's game week. So we're, we're doing really good here in Tyler, Texas, and we're definitely ready for this uh, Saturday tilt with Louisiana. So do you like the timing uh, that Sark used in terms of naming Hudson Carr? Do you like the idea of Hudson having uh, about a week or so to get used to the idea of, okay, I'm not sure if I take the last snap of the season, uh, but I know I'm taking the first one? Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it tells the team – when you compete at a position with someone else that's doing pretty well and you win that job, here's your reward. It, it's a justification for all the work in the off season when you, when you win a competition. And so it, it shows the team, hey, there was a competition. These two guys played really well. Hudson separated towards the end. He's going to be the guy. So it, it shows a, 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 a trust with the players. When, when, can, when Coach Sark can come out and say, this is going to be our guy for week one, let's roll. Justin, some insider sites brag about breaking news that we all kind of knew, while other insider sites show that they knew what was going on all along by announcing NIL deals. Congrats to you guys for the relationship that y'all have with Hudson Card. A series of interviews that actually started at the beginning of fall practice will continue throughout the season. What has impressed you most so far about y'all's dealings with Hudson Card, and what do you expect the relationship to look like throughout the season? You know, I've gotten the privilege of of getting to know Hudson over the last few years, uh, back in his days at Lake Travis, and and, and, and there's not enough words to describe him as a person. Like, he's, there's so much positivity that comes from Hudson Card. His demeanor, his attitude, his, his way that he approaches life. He, he's really a, an incredibly mature young man. Now, his, his on-the-field potential is through the roof. We all know that. We see the upside. We see, we see him literally putting windows in in front of wide receivers like he works at Home Depot. I mean, this is a guy that can, do all, can make those throws on the field. But the stuff off the field is what you're going to learn a lot about Hudson. You're going to learn that this is a very uh, intelligent guy. This is a guy, he's a left brain guy. He thinks from the other side. He he never gets too high, never gets too low. He's always an even-keeled guy. I've had someone inside the program tell me that if Hudson's running with the ones, the twos, or the threes on a certain day, you couldn't tell the difference. That's his attitude. Whereas, you know, Casey Thompson, I think, approached this competition this offseason as I'm the guy, which is you want that confidence in your quarterback. But he approached it as I'm the guy. I, this is my job. I'm going to win it. This is, this is what I was here for. I've been waiting for it. I believe Hudson approached it as I'm going to take it play by play, practice by practice, and segment by segment. He's not looking too far ahead. He never looks behind when he, when he does something well. And that's kind of the way he handles things. You want that type of hyper-focus in a quarterback at the University of Texas, which we all know can be an extremely taxing job. It can also give you, you know, lots of rewards as well, when, especially when, you, when you're successful. But Hudson's a guy you're going to learn just how team-oriented this guy is. I mean, he, Joe Cook has been absolutely killing the card knock series. And I love what Hudson said. I believe it was in the first part or maybe the second where he said, you know, everybody's worrying about your job. Well, it's not a one-man job. It's an 11-man job. And if we can't trust each other, we won't go very far. And so that mentality is huge. And, and to, to add a, few, a little bit more insight, you know, this is a guy that 24 hours after he finds out he's, uh, you know, he's going to be the, the starting quarterback week one against Louisiana, what does he do? He goes into the offensive line room and watches video with his offensive line. He's like, hey, guys, can I come in here and watch a video with y'all? How do you think that resonates with those players? How do you think that resonates with the team? They, they, they see that. That's called leadership without being a raw, raw type of guy. Hudson's going to lead by example. That's just the way it is. And I think once things start clicking, there's going to be hills and valleys with Hudson because he's a red shirt freshman quarterback. That's just that's, the percentages tells you there's going to be highs and lows. 
But this is going to be a guy that once things start to click in his eyes and everything starts to turn on, that's when you're going to see some excitement. And I, I don't think Coach Sartre could have been any more excited when he took this job looking and knowing in that quarterback room that there was a guy like a Hudson Card that can literally do everything this offense needs him to do. Everything. Can make every throw, can do the off-platform stuff. And when a play breaks down, you know, Casey's got some athleticism. Hudson Card is a really good athlete. You're going to learn that really fast. If you have any doubts, you need to watch our man Texas Homer's video on Hudson Card's new YouTube channel where he broke down stuff he did as a sophomore playing wide receiver at Lake Travis. This kid has another year. And so from top to bottom, I think you're going to learn a lot about the new starting quarterback in Texas. I think you're going to be excited. I think that's going to be a guy that you're going to rally behind. And, and he's one of those who doesn't say much. He doesn't talk much. His actions speak so much louder than his words. And I give a ton of credit to Doug and Cindy Carr, his parents. They have raised him in the, the, the best way possible. He is such a mature young man. And I think Sark and this group and this team, they know Hudson's the guy, and they're ready to get on the saddle. Talking with Justin Wells of Inside Texas. Justin, let's talk about that backup quarterback. Casey Thompson obviously found out the same information, except now he is the backup. Talk about what you know about how he's reacted to it, and then what did you think of Coach Sark saying that he will definitely play against Louisiana? I think, you know, his reaction to the news is probably typical of any competition, uh, you know, in college athletics when, when you don't get the starting job. Casey wanted that starting position. And Casey Thompson's a guy that I think can win football games for Texas. I think he's a guy that can come in. He can keep the offense steady. He may not make a lot of plays. He may not make a lot of wow throws, but I think he can keep you in the game. He can, he can manage that offense for you in, in a pinch. I, you know, obviously he, he probably wasn't as happy. Uh, you know, but, but that's, that's kind of the reaction you're going to get sometimes from a, from a hardcore competitor. Uh, with, with Coach Sark saying that, you know, he's going to see the field, I think part of that is, you know, Hudson has, has, doesn't have a lot of experience. And, and you don't actually know how Hudson's going to play until the bullets start firing. And so with, with that, you know Casey has a little experience. You, we, we saw what he can do in the second half against the Alamo Bowl. You, you know that if, if it had to happen, you could put in a guy that feels confident enough to, to, to give you some reps, to, to, to get you some first downs, to move the ball if possible. And so at, I think it's going to be mostly Hudson against Louisiana, but I also know that things change drive to drive, play to play. And, and I think Sark's going to use that wisely. There's, there's no reason to say Hudson's the starter, Casey, we don't need you anymore. No, actually, they need Casey more now. To me, Casey Thompson is much, much more valuable to this program as the backup quarterback rather than the starter. Because when you've got an experienced backup, when you've got a guy that I think players like and pull for as your backup, and if something does happen to Hudson, you know, God forbid, Casey can come in and, and steady the ship. To me, that's being an offensive coordinator, that's being a head coach, that's having a, a head coach that's played quarterback before. He knows how to handle this position, and I think that's the best way to handle that moving forward. I'm assuming these guys aren't going to be rotating every third series, so what would it take to see Casey Thompson in game action that matters this Saturday? I, I don't know. I, I think it would be Hudson falling on his face. I think it would be the offense sputtering and not move, getting any movement, not getting down the field. You know, Sark talked about that a lot in the offseason when we had a, a, his availabilities. You know, he wants a guy that can get in there and get the ball down the field. That, that's the whole premise of this offense is to fire the ball down the field, all gas, no breaks. So an instance where, where Casey would come in, I'm unsure. I don't know what that dynamic is going to be yet. I, it would probably have to be something, you know, that happens to Hudson and or the, the offense just sputters. For, for the first quarter or so. But I, I don't even think Sart knows that scenario yet, guys, because we don't know what, what this first half is going to look like. Louisiana is really good. I've said that a couple times on the shows already, and I'm sure Texas fans are rolling their eyes. Stop that. This is a good team. And so I think Sart just wants to be absolutely prepared because if the offense doesn't work as well, Casey can come in and maybe, maybe offer a boost or spark. So what should Longhorn fans expect to see out of the Raging Cajuns on offense and defense this Saturday? Experience. 
you're looking at one of the most experienced football teams in all of college football. Their offensive line has almost three years of guys that have been in the trenches and have gone through the wars. There are probably five or six future NFL prospects on this roster. This is a team that's gone 21-4 and four over the last two seasons. And with Billy Napier coming out of the, the Nick Saban coaching tree of Alabama, he has done nothing short of an outstanding job at the University of Louisiana, and he deserves a ton of credit. They've got some dudes over there. <laughs> they, you know, guys from Chris Smith to Braylon Trahan, they've got some guys that you're going to see playing on Sundays. And they also beat a pretty good Iowa State team last year to open the season. So any chance that this team is overlooked, any chance that the, the players don't take them serious, I think that all goes away in practice this week when you start putting these players on film because Louisiana is really good. I actually think Billy Napier is going to set himself up to be the next coach at LSU. He is a, 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 a Louisiana guy by heart. He's that talented. He's that good. These guys are going to come in and, and play really hard. People want to say, well, this is going to be their Super Bowl. It might be. That's how they're going to approach it. When you're going into a stadium that's going to be fully comp- full, at full capacity – Brand new South End Zone unveiling. There's so many new things. The Sark era is, is starting. So many storylines. All Louisiana has to do is come in and win, and they know that. They know the pressure is going to be on Texas, and so the Horns got to be ready. They, they got to be ready because this is a team that's going to come in. I think this team could finish as high as fifth in the Big Twelve this season. That's how solid they are. And I also think this is good for Texas. This is going to be a good indicator. There's nothing wrong with with, with playing a few cakes at the first of the season to kind of get your, your rhythm down. But when you got to get after it from week one, you find out who you are as a team a lot quicker. And, and, and what, what they do on Saturday and what they put on film against Louisiana and how they perform, it's going to have a lot to a bearing on what happens the rest of the season. It won't be, you know, the end-all, be-all, no matter what the outcome is. But then you've got Arkansas the next week in Fayetteville. And any, any Texas fan that's been there before knows – there's not many places crazier on this planet than Fayetteville, Fayetteville Arkansas, uh, for a Texas game. And so, I, at the end, I think Louisiana is going to be tough. I think Texas is going to have to come out and be really tough. I think Texas' strength is going to be their defensive line, their defensive front. And I think that's going to have to – if they want to win this game and control the line of scrimmage, I think it's going to start there. Talking with Justin Wells. Remember, check out InsideTexas.com, On3.com, their new relationship there, getting you even more content. Uh, Justin, yesterday was, I guess it's actually Monday afternoon, uh, the depth chart comes out. Obviously, the Hudson Card story is the, the first one on everybody's mind. Anything else jump out to you about the depth chart? I feel like at this point, uh, you guys had a good indicator of what it was, and I don't think Coach Sark was hiding a whole lot from people in terms of the depth chart, but did anything really stand out to you or surprise you there? Not really. Uh, you know, we've been really fortunate to have, you know, really good practice reports and accurate depth charts. And, and so we, we, we pretty much had this thing pinned. But, you know, it doesn't discount some of the surprises of, of the fall camp. Anthony uh, Cook, give that guy a ton of credit. He, he moves around, he plays some corner, he plays some safety. Looks like he's found a home at nickel. He is re- reinvigorated his career. This is a guy that was highly touted coming out of high school. Got pretty bulky, got a little bit slower, kind of had some hard times in Texas for a year or two. Now he's found a second win. And him coming in and nailing down that nickel job, that, that to me shows, it just shows you no matter how hard it gets for, you, for the players, you don't always have to go to the portal. You don't always have to go to another school. It, grass is not always greener on the other side. Oftentimes it's actually dead grass. And you need to just hit that adversity and make it make you grow as a character. I think that's what Anthony Cook's done, I, and I think he deserves a ton of credit doing that. Also, seeing Luke Brockermeyer in the middle, of course, we've been raving about Luke since, since spring because the guy was an interception machine. I mean, no, no offense to Casey Thompson, but there was there was a streak where Luke was picking Casey every single day, and so that guy really earned his his stripes. He earned that that, that right to stand up there and. and uh, play beside DeMarvion Overshone at linebacker and, and bring that. And so n- not a lot of surprises on the depth chart, but I wanted to, to highlight those two guys because I think they've had really good off season all the way from spring and into fall camp. Give Luke Brockermeyer and Anthony Cook a ton of credit there. 
All right, Justin, we're going to avoid Cowboys talk this week because, well, there is, really isn't a ton to discuss, and we will get your preview on that team Wednesday before the Thursday night affair with the Tampa Bay Bucks. I did want to run through the Big 12 a little bit, get your predictions on the conference, the national landscape, and the Longhorn season as well. So starting in the Big 12, who is the most overrated team in this conference? Mm. Oh, TCU. Hmm. I agree there's, with that. There's, there's, the most un- there's talent there. There's talent there, and Max Duggan can play. I think I think there's a lot of ability there, but I also think that Patterson is pushing all his chips to the center of the table with this season. Uh, that that program needs a boost because they haven't been successful over the last few years. Patterson's been there 20 plus, and a lot of times those places need a new voice. And so I, I feel like TCU, which has been a thorn in Texas side uh, since they've entered the Big 12, that that that's without debate, I do think they're the most overrated team in the Big 12. 100% agreed with that analysis. Most underrated team in the conference. Ooh. If, if, if Kansas State gets their quarterback situation right like they had it last year, I think that team is formidable. I think those guys are good. Chris Kleiman does a really good job of not only recruiting and building a culture, but, but finding guys to fit his system. And so if Kansas State can come in there and really get back to where they, where they began last year before they lost Skylar Thompson for the season, if they can get quarterback back to where it was, I think Kansas State is one of the more underrated teams in this conference. And I think going to Manhattan can always be a tall task. So there's a couple other schools I like in this conference. That, that, I mean, I, I want to – if, if, the, if the quarterback situation at Baylor was a little better, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Gary Bohannon. If that situation was a little bit better, I'd probably give a nod to Baylor because I think their defense is going to come back really solid. They've got some guys and Jalen Petrie, and, and they've got some dudes that can play. But most underrated, I'll give it to Kansas State. I don't understand why Dave Aranda went with Bohannon over Zeno, especially because he brought an OC in specifically this last or this off season to spread things out and throw the football a little bit more. Jerry Bohannon is not that guy. He's not that guy, and the truth be known, the best quarterback on that roster is a freshman walk-on right now. Give it a few years, and you're going to see C.J. Rogers as the starting quarterback in Waco, and and you're going to see a guy that can really chunk the ball up and down the field. All right, who is playing for the Big 12 title in Jerry World in early December, and who wins that Big 12 championship? I think it's going to come down to Oklahoma's going to be there. I mean, they've essentially, I think they've put up a series of apartments in Arlington just so they know where they can stay each year in December because they, uh, it's an annual ritual for them to show up to AT&T Stadium. The other team is going to come down to Texas and, and Iowa State. Right now, I'm leaning towards Iowa State because, to me, Texas is still kind of an unknown. We don't know exactly what the offense is going to look like. We don't know exactly – uh, what the defense is going to be able to do in PK's new system, even though it does look like it's going to be unbelievably positive. And so it's going to, it's going to come down to Texas and Iowa State meeting up in, in, in Arlington. I, I know i got to make a pick, and it's tough, but I, I think Texas can overtake Iowa State. The last two years, the Cyclones had barely beaten Texas. Uh, in, in both games, Texas was completely overplayed. They were completely outcoached. That's not going to – I don't see that happening this year. They're definitely not going to get out coached, And I don't think from a talent standpoint, Iowa State can match up with Texas when you go, you know, offensive line, offensive line, D-line to D-line. They've got Brees Hall. They've got Charlie Kohler. they got guys that are really good offensive players. And of course, you have Brock Pumpfake Pump, uh, Pump Purdy. My man Ian Boyd is a big fan of that guy. And so we know what Iowa State presents. But I think it's going to be a challenge for Texas. And if Texas can beat Iowa State and sneak into that second spot, Texas and OU in the Big 12 championship in Arlington in early December looks like my prediction. Okay, so who wins that game? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Mm. All right, college football playoff final four, and who makes it to the championship game and ultimately wins that title? Man, pressure's on. Woo! Final four, I think you're going to see another listing of the Blue Bloods. Um, Clemson's going to be there. DJU is the new quarterback, and you're not going to see much difference in him and Trevor Lawrence. DJU is legit. The dude can chunk the football. Uh, Alabama's probably going to be back. Uh, obviously, they lose. Uh, they lost a lot of guys, especially on the offensive side. 
but it's Bama. They don't they don't rebuild. They reload. And Bryce Young is special. Matt Jones was a three star that just went in the top in the first round to the New England Patriots, and he has no upside that Bryce Young holds. And so the kid from Cali is going to take the reins, and and, and I think Bama will be there. Uh, Ohio State. I think Ohio State, and it's going to be between Ohio State and Georgia for the last spot. Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I want to see how Ohio State does without Justin Fields. I want to see, and I know C.J. Stroud's got a ton of upside. I know they've got a really good defense. I want to see kind of how they do, but I think Georgia's going to be really good too. I think this is going to be a team that, that really, J.T. Daniels finally can take the reins, and I think there's just so much talent on defense for Georgia. Their defensive line is probably the largest in college football. And so I think those, I think Ohio State and Georgia will battle for the last spot. And so I'll, I'll give me Clemson, Alabama, OU, and then I can't decide over, over Ohio State and Georgia. I think it's going to be one of those two teams. Give me Georgia because I think Ohio State is getting more and more away from the Urban Meyer era, which I think is more and more Ryan Day. And I don't think that's as good as Urban Meyer. And so I think you'll start to see a little bit of that trickle out. The fact that they play in the Big Ten and there's not a lot of challenges there may help them down the stretch. But Georgia is Georgia can be really good this year, guys. That, that's my sleeper to get to the national championship. If JT Daniels comes correct, if that team put, can, can, can put together a full season under Kirby Smart, I like Georgia in the national championship. All right. All right. And last thing, I got to. Well, you already said Texas is going to be in the Big 12 championship. So you have them at nine or 10 regular season wins. What do you think happens this weekend versus Louisiana? Just give us a final score. I think it's going to be a slobber knocker. I think these two teams are going to beat the hell out of each other. It it all starts up front. Louisiana has a ton of tough kids uh, up in that front seven, also on that offensive line. I think it's going to be nitty and gritty. I do think Texas is going to pull away because of that number five in the backfield, B. John Robinson. I think he is the difference maker. He's your force multiplier, and I feel like Texas is going to pull it out 28-16. All right. There you go. That is Justin Wells. Check out Inside Texas and on 3.com as we get closer to the game. Justin, always appreciate the time, brother. We'll talk next week. Nothing but love, gentlemen. Thanks, brother.